Hey guys, welcome back to another Guys Stuff. Today we're doing a delicious, healthy pepperoni mushroom pizza. And of course, you can put whatever toppings you want on yours, but I love pepperoni mushroom. Now, on a pizza, the crust is the bulk of what makes it really unhealthy. Especially if you're like me, I'm type 2 diabetic. I'm always concerned about sugar and carbs. So that's what I'm concentrating on eliminating. You can go even further if you are concerned more about the fat in your diet. You can substitute things like turkey pepperoni instead of regular or go with low-fat cheese, that kind of thing. This one, it's really in the middle ground. Does not sacrifice flavor whatsoever. We're making our crust out of cauliflower. Now, if you've never tried it, well, it might seem kind of weird. But what we're going to do is use a fine grater. And you need one that's very fine. Don't use one that makes shreds or is chunky. Those will not work. And we're going to make what's called cauliflower rice. Basically, we're just going to turn this cauliflower into little tiny bits. That's taking the place of our flour. We're going to use, now I'm doing this on a sheet pan. I'm basically making about the size of a large pizza, right? It's going to be more on the thin crust side, in between thin crust and regular, not a pan pizza. There's no leavening agent. It's not light and fluffy like really delicious pizza crust, but it's still delicious, especially if you like the thinner crust pizza, which I happen to. Anyway, we're going to use two heads of cauliflower for a big sheet pan size. And what I did, because I'm buying some of the ingredients in the larger packages to save money, I'm buying enough to make two pizzas. So get yourself four heads, and you'll have enough to make two one after the other. We're going to use four eggs. We're going to use half a jar of basil. This is a 0.6 ounce or so. So we're going to use about 0.3 ounces for this entire sheet. And we're going to use a couple tablespoons of garlic powder and a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. We're going to mix all of those in a bowl and lay out that very nice and evenly in our sheet pan. Now you can either grease the sheet pan or you can do what I'm doing and use some heavy duty foil and maybe hit that with some Pam if you think the cheese is going to stick. I'm just going to spritz it real lightly. I've got uh, some canola oil here. You can use vegetable, vegetable spray, whatever you got, just to keep it from sticking. And that's it to the crust. Now the secret here, because normally with a pizza, you make your crust, you put your sauce on, you put your cheese on, you put your toppings on, maybe a little more cheese, maybe a little more toppings, eh, whatever. You throw it out in a nice hot, piping hot oven, and it all cooks and bakes evenly. Well, you can't do that with the cauliflower. There is a whole lot of moisture in here. So we're doing two stages. First, we're gonna make our dough, make our crust, and we're gonna bake that separately for a good 20, 25 minutes until it gets crispy. Then we're gonna put on our sauce, our cheese, and our toppings and bake that as a normal pizza would. And that is what's gonna make this delicious and very pizza-like. Now, for the pizza sauce, Prego is very good, very healthy. Ragu also has one that's actually just a little bit more healthy. I prefer the taste of the Prego, though, but it's very nice. And we're only going to use half a bottle per big sheet. We're going to use a couple cups of mozzarella. We're going to use one small bag of finely shredded Parmesan. This is a one and a half cup bag. Uh, this, by the way, goes into the crust, not on the top. And I love canned mushrooms on my pizza. I just, they, I think they're absolutely delicious on pizza. If you are a fan of fresh mushrooms, that's totally cool too, but you are going to need to saute them first because this is not going to be in hot or long enough to cook raw fresh mushrooms. So you can go either way. And then I'm using regular pepperoni. Like I said before, if you want to step it up a little bit further on the health meter, Use turkey pepperoni. I promise you it tastes exactly the same. It is absolutely delicious. Only drawback is cost. It is twice as much. You can't buy it in these big bulk packs, and you can even save more if you want to get the really big bulk pack at Sam's or Costco and cut the price even more. Eating healthy, man, the only downside is cost. This pizza, <laughs> uh, you're talking about 25 bucks. <laughs> You know, it sucks. It's like twice as much as a, a normal pie, but that's what you get when you want to eat healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and shred the cauliflower, add in the eggs, the parmesan, the basil, the garlic, the salt, the pepper, and roll out our crust. I've got the oven preheating, and it'll be ready to pop in. 
Just mix it all up in a big bowl, roll it out, squish it out, whatever you got to do to make it nice and even. Now when shredding your cauliflower, you can trim away any green leaves on, your, on the bottom of your heads, but leave it whole. Don't be tempted to take each blossom off and try to grate it that way. It'll just fall apart. All you do is grab the part of your grater that it's not the smallest usually, like these little dots here. Don't use these. Use the kind that kind of look like it's for cheese, but the small ones. And just pick a spot and grate away. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but eventually you get there. And just work your way around the cauliflower head until it's all down. All you're grating is the, you know, the fluffy part that you're used to eating, not the stalks themselves. So into the cauliflower go four lightly broken and beaten eggs, our basil, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and our parmesan. Mix all of this up really well. Looks like I might need a slightly bigger bowl. <laughs> and then we're going to just form it into the pan. I thought I could get away with the little one, but nope. So just get your fingers in there and mix this all up real well. You know, it's funny. This smells exactly like if you're gutting a pumpkin, making a jack-o'-lantern. It's the exact same gut smell. <laughs> if you see any really big bits of cauliflower that fell in, get them out because those are no good for the dough. Lightly grease your pan. Don't worry about liquid you see in here. That's why we're doing the twice baked thing. Try to get as much out as you can because you really do want it all. It doesn't make a whole heck of a lot. And it's not going to get much thicker. If anything, it's going to get a little bit smaller than what we put in the pan. Now, if you're doing this, you'll see exactly why you can't make this very thick. Because it is so moist right now, it would take a good half hour, 45 minutes to drive all of it out if you wanted to actually make a real pizza-like crust. But you can't do that because it'll burn. So just get it a nice, even thickness. This is about a quarter inch thick. So like I said, it's between a thin crust and a regular. And that'll be absolutely perfect. That's just what we want. Okay, in the oven it goes at 400. Check it at 20 minutes. It'll be done probably close to 25. And you're just looking for it to start to crisp up and get a little bit golden. The green is from the basil and that'll start to lighten up a bit. Just make sure you don't have any real thick spots. That is what you want to avoid. Squish it up into the corners. You can make a, a little bit of a lip on the crust if you want to. And there we go. All right, in she goes. Now, if you do use these canned mushrooms like I like, you must rinse them. There is a ton of sodium in the liquid that they come in. So wash it off, and then you have to just lay them out on paper towels and pat them dry. You want as little liquid going on it at this point forward as possible. We're going to have a lot in the pizza sauce, obviously, and that's the bulk of it. And we're going to be putting on our mozzarella. But you don't want to add any extra water from your mushrooms or anything else you put on it. So the important part is to get all the sodium out of these guys here. And of course, if you're doing sauteed fresh mushrooms, you don't have to worry about that. Yummy, 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 yummy. Love mushrooms. Nom, 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 nom. The crust is almost ready. So now I've got my toppings prepped. We're just gonna use half a can of this. Whatever toppings you're putting on, obviously it's going to be two taste. I'm doing a, a, a light, but normal amount of pepperoni. I'm not going super heavy. There's probably about a cup worth of pepperoni for the whole sheet. And mushrooms, hey, can't have too many mushrooms, man. They're just veggies. If you want to put ham on there, maybe some pineapple, maybe some bacon, you know, you're getting kind of away from the healthiness part, depending on how you top it. But like I said, there's some variation in there. And then we've got about four cups of mozzarella. Now, like I said, you can save money by getting bigger packages of stuff, or you can go healthier and make some substitutions like low-fat cheese or turkey pepperoni. It's all up to you. 
25 minutes in, I'm going to check it here. What we're looking for is it to start to go crispy. It's at the point where it's still got a little give. Feels like a medium rare steak. I'm going to give it another few minutes and then we'll pull it out. I pulled this out at about 28 minutes. You can see we've got a little bit of golden crisp along the sides. That's what we're looking for. And boy, does it smell good. That basil is so aromatic. So the first thing we're going to put down is our sauce. Just put down what you need. You just want a, a light, even coat. You know what? I'm going to use this whole jar. It's not quite as big as it looked on the shelf. Next goes the cheese. Again, just a nice, even coat. You know how to make a pizza. I'm not to tell you this. And of course, this is to taste. I'm not going crazy. Now, normally, if I wasn't making a healthy pizza, I'd be using about twice the amount of cheese because I love cheese on my pizzas. But this we're just doing normal. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to do the mushrooms and pepperoni. And back in the oven it goes. Totally depends on the toppings, how much longer you're going to need it. It's going to be usually between 7 and 15 minutes. This is probably going to hit about 12 or 15 because there's still quite a bit of moisture in these mushrooms. And I'm kind of doubling up on the mushrooms since... They're healthy, and I love them. Normally, I'd put a lot more pepperoni, but you got to drive out whatever moisture you're putting in, and that will increase your time. And out it comes. Oh, man, does that look and smell good. Now, don't expect this to mimic pizza. It's not supposed to be. Anybody that tells you this tastes exactly like pizza is completely full of crap. It's its own thing. All right, now, does it look pretty? No, because this crust does not hold together like real pizza crust, but you can still kind of pick it up. I do suggest using a fork, though. If you're thinking it tastes anything like cauliflower, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Pretty much you just taste the basil, which is a very pizza-like flavor. You can put other stuff in it. You can kick it up, put some red pepper flakes. I'm going to do that. I waited to do it afterwards because the wife hates anything with heat, but I would put it, if it was just me, right into the crust, a little cayenne. Go crazy, you know? Mix it up with flavors. This is really good. You definitely do, like I said, want to eat it with a fork, though. Because the crust just... It's slightly crispy, but you can't pick it up. There's too many toppings. So there you go, guys. A really delicious, healthy alternative to normal pizza. Like I said, a little expensive, and you can make it healthier. It's all up to you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah.